There's a few different examples in the Bible of Bible characters literally walking with God. Okay, Adam says in the Bible that before sin entered the world, before the fall of humanity, Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. We were created to be in fellowship with Almighty God. You look at Enoch in the Bible. He's another Bible character, and he walked with God. It seemed as though it delighted God so much that he walked with God that he was here one day, and then all of a sudden, God just swooped him up and took him right up with it. Why? Because he was a man that walked with God. Go read that story. It's glorious. It says in the Bible that we are to walk with God. 2 Corinthians says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Galatians 5.16, so I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. Micah 6.8 says, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. Guys, if you need a good community group sermon, there's your three-point sermon right there. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That's what I want to get into today. What does it look like to walk humbly with Jesus, walking with Jesus? All the different places that we went in Israel, friends, it was glorious. You saw us doing baptisms. That was in the Jordan River where Jesus was baptized. We went down the same path that Jesus would have taken on his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We went to the Garden of Gethsemane. We went to the Mount of Olives where Jesus would have ascended into heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. Friends, I wish I could go through every single location with you right now that Jesus ever went and all the places that I went but we don't have enough time we will be here all day long and it reminds me of the story of uh, there was a son and the son was a long-haired hippie and this long-haired hippie he wanted a car really bad the son kept asking the dad dad give me a car the dad hated that the son's hair was so long he said cut your hair and I'll get you a car and the son just wouldn't do it. And finally, the son said, hey, I, I got the best thing. The long-haired hippie said, Dad, Jesus had long hair. So give me a car. And the dad said, well, son, I think you're right. And Jesus also walked everywhere that he went. So get to walking. Now, before I get too deep into all these jokes... Just let's talk about what it must mean to walk with Jesus. To walk with Jesus, we have to start at the beginning. I want you to think about when you taught your children how to walk, how precious those days were. You get them a little walker, and they're all just kind of holding on, and they're taking their steps. And then all of a sudden, you balance them, and they're standing on their own, and they fall down. They stand, and then one day they take a step, and they fall, and then one glorious day, they're balanced, they take a step, and then three more steps, and everyone's like, oh my God, he's the greatest athlete of all time. Look how athletic he is. Look, she's a baller, and we glorify it. Why? Well, it's the ugliest thing that you've ever seen, but it's their first, and it's monumental. So my first point today is this. We all start the same way. How? Learning to walk. We all start learning to walk with Christ. We all must arrive at the basics. We all must have a point of beginning. We all need to be able to mark our first steps. We all have to pray a prayer of salvation, walk the altar, have community groups, whatever those steps are, it's in repentance, forgiveness, and restoration. These are all common threads of beginning our walk with Almighty God. Now, if you've ever sat under the teaching of Pastor Bruce Ewing, 
any teaching at all, you know three words and three ways that he teaches. He always teaches about what? The word, prayer, and fellowship. And I look at this man, and he literally shines with the glory of a man that walks with Christ because he goes back to the basics. He lives and breathes the word, prayer, and fellowship with believers. Tomorrow is Pastor Bruce's birthday. Can we put our hands together for Pastor Bruce right now? Don't we love him? He's amazing. There are some basics that will get you on your feet and give you your first steps. But I want to tell you this, when God gets you on your feet and you take your first steps, you don't graduate past those first steps. It's called the fundamentals of faith, and you return to them over and over again. The greatest athletes in the world practice their fundamentals every single day because it's the foundation of everything that we do. And here at Shreveport Community Church, we have our first steps, and we set it up very methodically to walk towards Christ. Number one, if you can't do anything else, just keep showing up to church. Everyone say, keep showing up. Show up Sunday mornings and say this, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to be a family that is rooted in the house of God. That's a step. Community groups, what are those? Those are small groups here at SC Church. I want to tell you this, probably the best group that you could be introduced to, and if you're trying to find a group, it is my wife Sarah's group on Wednesday nights. Every Wednesday night at 6.30, it's a discipleship class, the fundamentals, seeing what it means walking towards Christ. Is it a beginner class? No. It's for every single person, and I encourage you, find a community group. There's community groups happening all over the place. Connect class, it just happened. Getting connected to the church. I love West Shreveport. It's outreach. It's being the hands and feet of Jesus. These are all the first steps. We have to be in prayer. We got to be in the Bible. We got to tell people about our faith. We got to give to God, and we got to be thankful. These are all first steps in walking towards Christ. How many of you love the fact that God saved you? Anybody in this place? How many of you are thankful for your first steps? Put your hands together for your first steps, if you remember them. Walking to God and walking for God is different than walking with God. Walking to God and walking for God, these are your beginning steps. And just think about that child that's taking his first steps. What are they doing? They're probably walking towards mommy and daddy, right? Going to mom, to daddy. And I'm praying this. If any of you are walking towards Christ today, I pray in Jesus' name you find him. That you will find Jesus. And then once they start walking, well, it delights mom and dad. So they're like, look what I can do. And they start jumping around and they begin walking for their parents. So I want to tell you, we walk for Christ, and there's many examples in the Bible of the disciples walking for Jesus. Just a few examples, whenever Jesus would send them to the town ahead of, of him to announce that he's coming, they're walking for Jesus. Whenever Jesus would send the disciples out two by two, to perform miracles and preach the messages he taught them walking for Jesus. Whenever Jesus went and sent them out to get the donkey that he was going to ride in on his triumphal entry, this is what the disciples said. They said, I'm here to get this donkey for my master. I'm representing my master. And these are all wonderful ways to begin. And I just want you to be so thankful that God allows us in our first steps to walk to him, and God will always allow you to find him if you seek him. And then as you walk for him, then it leads you to my second point. And my second point is actually a question. If you're taking notes, my second point is, what does it mean 
to walk with God. We're thankful for walking to and for him, but what does it actually mean to walk with God? Okay, number one, walking with God means you walk in agreement. Okay, the most powerful thing that we have in the community of Christ is the power of agreement. Where two or more agree on the name of Jesus, it will be done. Your neighbors on your right and left walking with Christ in agreement with Christ saying you're exactly where you need to be. Agreeing on his word, on everything that you're doing. That's a power stance. That's a power walk. How else can you walk with Christ? Well, to walk with means you enjoy each other. It means you literally enjoy each other. Sometimes I'll be on my street at home and I'll just, I'll go on a walk with Sarah. And I'll just hold her hand walking down her street. And we don't have an agenda. We don't have a destination. We're not really trying to, I just want to be in her presence. I just love being with my wife. And it's the same thing with Almighty God. Sometimes you get in the presence of Almighty God and you don't have an agenda. Sometimes you sit in the presence of God and you don't have even a need. Sometimes you sit in his presence and you just like being with Almighty God. Come on, everyone, just bow your head and close your eyes right now. Everyone breathe in real deep and breathe out. And just in your spirit, just say, God, I delight being with you. Say, God, I love being in your presence. Now look at me right now. That's what we need to do. That's called walking with Almighty God. You delight in the fact that on this Sunday morning in Shreveport Community Church, where two or more are gathered, Jesus is here. If we gather in the name of Jesus, Jesus has visited this place. How else do we walk with Jesus? We walk with Jesus as we go in the same direction. You walk with someone as you go with them in the same direction. You go to the same place. The best example of this is the story of Ruth in the Bible. I love the story of Ruth. Ruth, her husband, dies, and she's left by herself with her mother-in-law. And she doesn't know her next step. She doesn't know what she's going to do. But then we get these famous verses. What is it? Where you go... I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Walking with means you have the same destination and the same direction. I love watching the disciples and just observing how they walked with Christ because you can see at the beginning they're just walking to And walking for Jesus. But then something happens where it transitions and they begin walking with Jesus. They go from just observing to walking with him as a friend. And I love this scripture so much because this is the telltale sign that they are getting closer to Jesus. John 15 and 15. It says, I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Guys, that's where we want to get. We want to get to a place where we walk hand in hand with Jesus. And what he wants to be done, we want done in our lives. The direction he goes, that's where we want to go. How he speaks That's how we speak. We become friends. We're in agreement with him. We delight being with him. And we're friends with Jesus. That's walking with Jesus. How many of you want to walk with Jesus in this place? Come on, give God some praise right now if you want to walk with Jesus. And my last point is this. And i got to kind of introduce it. But I want to tell you about this crazy, cool, it's kind of scary technology. It's this surveillance software. It's called gate recognition technology. 
listen to this. They literally have a software now which can recognize a person by their walk, by their gait. So we all know that everyone has a unique fingerprint, everyone has a unique retina, DNA. But now, if a computer, if it records you walking, now it can identify you, even if you have a mask, even if it's just a silhouette of you, by your walk, because every single one of us, we have a unique walk all to our own. And that is my last point. My last point is this. We all have our own walk. Even though we all start out the same, if we walk long enough, we develop our own gait. And this just proves one more reason we should stop falling into the comparison game with each other. Everybody look at me right now and listen. Stop comparing yourself to others. Your walk is your own walk, and no one else has a walk quite like yours. Why? Well, because the Bible says in Philippians 2.12, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Now, this is the King James Version. All the others just says your, but the King James says your own. It's an emphasis on it's not anybody else's, it's not your neighbor's, but it's your own walk and salvation. It's your life and soul, relationship with Jesus, and it's your own. Each of us is responsible for our own walk with Jesus. But let me move your mind away from the idea of salvation itself, and let's look at one more passage of Scripture this one is so clear, and I, I just want it to be abundantly clear to you what I'm talking about right now. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 6 says this. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. I, I just hope that's so clear to you, because... The scripture could not be more clear. We serve the same God. We serve the same truth. We serve the same fundamentals of faith. But your walk and your direction is different than your neighbor's. It's your own. Yeah, your spiritual life might be a little different than mine. Your pace might be a little different. And it should be because we have our own walk. We have our own journey. Get out of this comparison mindset. And be confident in who God has created you to be. I want Alex and the band to come up here. And I'm, I'm closing right now. I just want to ask you this question. You can't answer immediately. Because this is a loaded question. Do you want to walk with Jesus to the places that Jesus went? Now don't, don't answer yet. One time James and John, they asked if they could sit with Jesus. He said, can I sit on your left and then the other on Jesus' right? And I'm paraphrasing. But Jesus said, it's not in my power to grant that at this time. And then he asked him a question. He said, do you really think you can drink the cup I am going to have to drink? And James and John, they didn't have a clue what they're talking about. And they were trying to just impress everyone around them. And they said, absolutely, yes. Yes, I can do that. Yes, I want that. They didn't know what they were saying. But then Jesus answers. And Jesus says, you know what, fellas? When you're ready, you really will drink the cup that I'm having to drink. And what Jesus was saying is that one day, James and John would definitely be walking the exact same path as Jesus. Which is... Delightful but terrifying at the same time because do you want to be the one that walks in the desert to face off with Satan? And do you have the power to be victorious? Can we walk with Jesus with the same kind of faith that it took for him to walk on water on the Sea of Galilee? Do you have the kind of faith to be able to experience what Jesus experienced on the Mount of Transfiguration? And keep it to yourself, because if you read that story, Jesus allows Peter, James, and John to experience that. But then after, Jesus says, hey, 
I want you to keep this just between me and you. Don't be going and telling everybody. Because so many times we have something that we have in our life. We want to scream it to the mountaintops what Jesus did. And we have to do that. That's what we're called to do. But in this situation, don't miss this. Jesus says, hey, for this time, keep it between us. I want it to be personal. I want you to delight in just being with me. And it really brings me to the main question in walking with Jesus. And that is, are you willing to take up your cross and walk with him to Golgotha? Are you willing, yes, to love Jesus when he's popular, he's the miracle worker, everyone loves him, but are you willing to walk with Jesus when he's unpopular, when they're trying to kill him and hurt anyone associated with Jesus? Because here I'm telling you today, walking with Jesus doesn't mean every step is going to be pleasant, every step is going to be easy, that it's just going to be this life of roses and just smiles. No, what I'm telling you today is you're going to go through ups and you're going to go through downs. But if you walk with Jesus, nothing this world throws your way can even come close to touching you because you're walking with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What does that look like? You talk the way Jesus talks. You do what Jesus did. You invest in what Jesus invested in. You care about what Jesus cared about. You hang with who Jesus hung with. And you do what Jesus did. Now, I want to end with a story. It's about one of my favorite people. Her name's Susie Adams. And Susie and Reg Adams, they're some of the best Christians I know. And Susie, she helped raise all of us Duran kids. She's like a second mom. She's just amazing. Well, in 2004, Susie had a couple seizures, which she never had those before, and she went to the doctor to get those checked out. And the doctor came back after the test with some terrible news. He said, Susie, you have a brain tumor, and we have to operate immediately. So days later, they prepped her for surgery to remove this brain tumor. And the surgeon came in. And the surgeon said, now listen, the tumor is in a place in your brain that's very delicate. And if we hit anything in there, you'll be paralyzed. We don't know where. So we're going to do our best. We're going to get as much out as we can, but we're going to leave the rest. Mama Bunny, Susie's mom, said, can I pray for the hands of the surgeon. Can I tell you, walking with Christ is bringing prayer in the midst of whatever you're facing. She prayed over the surgeon, prayed over Susie, and Susie went back and they did the surgery and the surgeon came back and they said his face was just amazed. Came back and he said, guys, I, I want you to know that God really moves. No, I want you to know God really does miracles. He said, when we got in for the surgery and we began to look at this tumor, he said it was as if the tumor had been lifted up and positioned in a perfect place. We didn't just get some of the tumor, we removed it all. But he said, there's still a process. He said, the trauma from the surgery, odds are Susie is gonna have to go through physical therapy for some of her motor skills and probably have to learn how to walk all over again. Susie left the hospital with a crutch because one side of her body was numb all the way down to her leg. She's walking. She's going to have to go through some physical therapy to learn how to walk, have her functionality again. Now, my brother, Dakota, he was nine years old at this time, and Susie pretty much helped raise Dakota from the time he was a baby. Dakota 
is a very capable young man. Okay, from the time he was little to right now, if Dakota, if he wants something and he wants you to do it, he's going to talk you into it. And by the end, you're going to be more excited than Dakota is about it. And you're going to be helping him. He's very capable. Nine years old, almost daily, he would talk people into driving him all the way across town to get to Susie to help her walk. He would say, you've got to drive me to Susie. She needs me to help her walk. He'd show up at the door and knock on the door. Susie would open it. And he'd say, here I am, Susie. I'm here to help you, help you do all of your exercises. Let's walk day after day. They were there together. Because get this, Susie couldn't do these exercises on her own. She needed the help of somebody else. I want to tell you this. Yes, we make our individual decision with Jesus. But I'm telling you, it's almost impossible to walk alone. We've got to have our community around us walking towards Jesus. One of the drills that they did, she had to bounce this ball. And if she looked down, she would lose her equilibrium and fall. But if she gazed off into one spot she could keep her balance but she would lose this ball she was bouncing a little dakota nine years old would go grab the ball when she dropped it bring it back to her susie you're doing so good you're doing great he would encourage her and this is what's amazing to me about this story susie said she was there when dakota was one years old helping him take his very first steps. She never thought that same little boy would years later help her learn how to walk all over again. Isn't that how the body of Christ is? Because here's what it is. Susie, her whole life, help people, help them walk. She's a great Christian. But then all of a sudden, something happens to Susie. She doesn't know what to do, but the body of Christ, her husband, little Dakota, her friends, her family, lift her up because she walked with Jesus through every single season. I want you to stand right now. I want you to stay in the reverence of this moment. I want you to let this fall on you. I want you to bow your heads. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to see Jesus walking beside you. Some of you don't know what to do. Some of you are in peril. You're in a tough situation. Some of you think that you're walking on your own. How dare you? Jesus is beside you every step of the way guiding you and leading you it's not us but it's almighty God as we sing this song I want you to worship and I want you to feel Christ in the midst of everything that you do come on Alex sing with us I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back come on sing that out no with everything back. within you sing it out and declare it I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back come on this is your moment no don't let your moment back. pass declare this with Jesus I have decided thank you Jesus to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus 
I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God, we love you. Thank you, God, for never leaving us. Thank you for never forsaking us. God, we delight in you today. God, we magnify your name today. Fill this place with your presence. Fill this place with your grace. Give us a new revelation of who you are, that you really do walk beside us, that you guide us, that you lead us. You take us through the best times, the worst times of our life, but you're always there. You're constant. God, give us new revelation of what walking with you really means. God, open our hearts and minds, our spirits, our souls to what that means, God. Forgive us for going through the motions. Forgive us for just going through the steps that we think Make everything okay, God. We surrender, and your way is the only way. We want you, God. We ask for you to take control. Fall in this place, Jesus. Break us to our core, Jesus. Show us what to do, Jesus. We want you and only you. We want you and only you. God, I pray for every man, woman, and child in this place. I pray for a surrender and a breaking to our core of how real you are. Forgive us for ever thinking that we are in control. Forgive us for ever thinking that it's our way. Forgive us for ever taking credit for anything. To God be the glory. We walk with you. Jesus, we walk with you. God, I pray for the needs of this house. Lord, I pray you step in and you heal my friends, that you touch them, that you bless them. I pray that it's more real to them than it's ever been in their life, that you are the miracle worker, that you are in control, that you're the God of this universe. You're the beginning, the end. You're bigger than any problem that we could ever face. So God, I pray that your realness will become tangible right now. I pray it will become tangible for my friends in this place. That the realness of your grace, we will be able to reach out and touch it. We will be able to feel it. And not only walk with you, God, I pray we run towards you. God, I just thank you for every person in this place. God, we surrender to you. Today in this holy moment, I can feel God in this place so thick. God's calling out to a few of you, and you've just you've kind of been on the edge, trying to decide if you want to do this God thing or not. Today is the day of your salvation. If you need to rededicate your life, if you need to get some things right, whatever it is, Right now is your time. You do not wait. Right now is your time. I want you to pray this prayer after me. I want you to mean it with everything in your spirit. Everyone pray after me. Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died on the cross and you rose on the third day. Take control of my life. 
I surrender to you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. God, thank you for everyone that just accepted you. God, I pray that they will tell somebody about it. They'll fill out a connect card. God, I pray they'll go to a community group. I pray they'll go out in the front and find someone to give them the next steps. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Everyone say, Jesus, I love you. Say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, we love you. And everybody said, come on, give God some praise in this place. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah.